During the summer of 2008, we ran a field school in British Columbia on the Sunshine Coast. It was a collaborative project with the Tleaman First Nation. Let's see what happened. And all along, the collaboration has been kind of a foundational idea for us. Um, how can we share knowledge? How do we build on that? Part of that collaboration then, and think of the overlap, is the education. How could we come together to educate both Tleaman youth, Tleaman community members, SFU students, and all the many, many visitors and all the outside communities who came to visit us. Dana's been coming into the community for is it two years plus now? Three. Three to come and talk to different people and just in the last nine months that I've been involved, they presented to our natural resource committee, our cultural committee, our elders, our chief and council. Uh, one of the things that we've tried to do is make it so that this wasn't, you know, sort of our project, our idea of coming in and saying, is it okay if we do it, and what's the right way to do this instead, um, stepping back and trying to find, you know, a, a nearly complete overlap between slamming interests and our own research interests, so that it became our project together. And there was no convincing required with SLAM. They just immediately saw that we, uh, like many others, came not only with good intentions, but with the means for backing up that plan of having real benefits begin to accrue for the, the nation. And so this has been a really fine thing. As long as our intellectual rights were protected and as long as our artifacts were protected and wouldn't leave our territory again like they have been in the past, They've been brought to museums all over this country, all over this, all over North America, and and um, we really wanted to utilize the agreement that we have with the museum here in Paul River now as well. So any artifacts that you see, you know, that will be found in the different places, are going to be housed here for our people to be able to access them easily and um, be able to use them for for different things. I think we can better understand this chunk of the world. I think we can talk about it in a little bit more relevant way, a way that actually hopefully explains it a little bit better, or closer to how it may have been seen at the time when people were using it. And I hope that that'll be something that'll help slam in as they move forward in trying to manage their, their land and their cultural resources and their natural resources as they move forward and get more control over the land. So I, I see this as a proactive measure for our kids so they're not spent wasting all of the money in court later on. Knowing where we have to protect now, um, all of our people talk about where we have to protect, what were the special places, but um, we actually have to know a little bit about them too in order to have them um, registered and things so that we can protect them in the future because most of them are not in the middle of our reserve. So, If we can't leave behind individuals who are going to try to continue this sort of work, then much of the project will be for naught. We will have collected some neat information, we will maybe have uh, contributed to some other goals uh, in community health and in treaty. But to really make a difference, it has to translate into people doing something that they believe in on the deep level. We've had so much fun. We've had the most warm welcome. It's been wonderful. I've been so excited. Having the SLAM and, uh, right here and having such community support has been I mean, unbelievable benefit items that come out of the ground, artifacts that we weren't sure about. Um, we've had a lot of interesting ideas from the community coming to us that we can then work with and sort of go from there. So it's been really, really fascinating experience. Love to do it again. <laughs> All over. <laughs> <laughs>
overwhelmed with emotion, even though it's not your direct family, but you feel almost a part of it somehow. And it's just an experience that you can't really get anywhere else. Community response to and partnership with this project has just been unprecedented in my experience. Uh, I've never been greeted more warmly and treated better by any group of people, any place I've ever been, than I have been here as an individual. And uh, the field school as an institution has been similarly welcomed and uh, treated as a as a trusted collaborator, rather than as an intrusive uh, element or, or means for extracting information. And that means a very great deal to me as an individual. I think for a lot of people nowadays, we're really aware that the earth is hurting. It's damaged. You see the damage people on the streets, you see the damage in, damage in the air that we breathe the number of people that we all know that have cancer. It's beyond us making any, any, um, any change in the world that is just on this trajectory of, of doom. And for me, the way to turn it around, the way to, to, to take back the earth and, and, and the trajectory that we're on is to make small changes. And I think the way to do that is to build relations among, from person to person, from community to community, and just kind of making those, making those links, realizing that we're all really good people, and we all care about the future of the planet, the future of our families. And so in, in some small way, on a day-to-day -day basis, I feel like that's what happens in a project such as this. It's a collaboration between SFU and Slyman. It's a collaboration between the SFU students and the Slyman youth who worked with us, the Slyman elders and myself and myself and my colleague and John Welch. One-on-one, -on -one, group to group, community to community, I feel like we were kind of strengthening the fabric um, among people that can only, only make the world a better place. And I take just huge joy from that.